on my way home for tea. And that same funny feeling flowed all over me. Now I'd like to know what it's like inside a man. If I find someone special, then I really can. At the press of a button, I can shrink to any size. All I need is someone who is interesting and wise. What about him? Watch that move that he makes. I must get inside that man no matter what it takes. It's a long way down to him lying on the ground. He won't believe his luck when he knows what he has found. If you'd like to know what he's like inside, stick around a while and I'll take you for a ride. Look, Bob, why don't you just ask her straight out what she'd like? Yes, well, that's no surprise, is it? I want to give something special. She doesn't even think I remember her birthday. So what's wrong with a nice box of chocolates? Nothing at all. They're a treat. But she's trying to lose some weight, and I don't want to give her chocolates, or she'll eat them to please me. Hmm. Hey, she might give them to you to eat instead. Now, that's a good idea. That's not very nice, Helen. It's her present. I'll just have to keep on thinking. OK. I was only trying to help. Oh, hello there. Sorry, didn't mean to be rude, but I've been trying to help Bob think, and it isn't easy. Anything I suggest, he thinks of something different. He's trying to decide what to buy a very good friend for her birthday. And I mean a very good friend. Do you find it hard to decide things sometimes? Hard to work things out? Which part of your body does all your thinking? Which part of you has to work things out and make decisions that will affect your life and your health? I suppose it'll be easier to help Bob if I go to the right place. Let's think. Now this is a puzzle. Sometimes we all have to think hard. what I call concentration. Now, is it this way? Or that way? Nah, this way. Another puzzle. How many times in a day do you have to think? Here we are, Bob's brain. Out of all the bits in the body, I think this place is my favourite. Well, so much goes on here. This is where all the messages come in, remember? It's just like a computer. When we look at things with our eyes, the eyes turn the picture into a message that the brain can understand. That way, we can see what's around us. Seeing is one of our senses. Can you remember the other senses from the time when I went inside blood? But the brain does more than just collect information. Every move you make is controlled from here. All your decisions are made here. This is your control room. But how do you make the right decisions? You have to think hard. This is where you decide to be healthy. Let's look at what makes Bob healthy. Oh, I remember this meal, do you? Makes my mouth water just thinking about it. Bob, what made you decide to choose this meal? Oh, that's easy. This meal is my favourite. It tastes delicious. But that wasn't the main reason. I knew that I needed to eat some vegetables, because I hadn't had any so far that day. The carrots looked good. Sometimes they can be overcooked and look limp in the canteen, but that day they were okay. Then I needed some green vegetables, and it was a toss-up between the peas and beans. So the peas won that day with a few sweet corn thrown in. Chicken is my favourite meat, so that was no contest really. And it was either chips or baby new potatoes. I had chips the day before. I like a bit of variety. So that's how Bob decides what he's going to choose to eat. He thinks about whether he's eating the right things. Depends, too, on what he fancies. What about you? How do you choose? What do you pack in your packed lunch? I like eating crunchy green apples. I enjoy for my dinner brown pita bread with bacon and lettuce. For my lunch today, I've got a ham roll, and for my pudding, I've got a banana. 
I've got um, white bread and brown bread, uh, a tomato, an egg, some orange juice and rice crackers with jam. For my lunch today I've got half and half sandwiches, half white bread and half brown bread. Pasta salad is one of my favourite foods. Sometimes I get fed up of eating sandwiches. It's important that food looks good. Today, I think I picked a rather large orange. <laughs> <laughs> there are times when you can't choose what you eat because you have to eat what you were given. Sometimes other people choose for you. But even then, you can keep an eye on the things that you eat so that you know what's going into your body. After all, it is your body and it deserves healthy food. Ah! at it again. You should see the bruises I've got. He starts up any old time, never warns me. I get flung from one corner of his body to the next. Well, I suppose it's for a good cause. Which is it this time, then? Rugby practice or just your usual daily workout? <laughs> Rugby training was yesterday. I'm just doing a few exercises at home to keep me going. Will you keep still for a second? Hang on, hang on. What's wrong with me? I'm in the brain. Why didn't anyone remind me? Legs, arms, stop moving. Right. Body, sit down in the chair so that I can finish what I want to say. Right. Now, when we had a closer look at Bob's skeleton, we found out that exercise is important for all sorts of reasons. Can you remember what they are? The muscles, for example, so that they work well, you need to give them something to do. The more you give them to do, the better and the stronger they get. The heart is a muscle. When you run or go for a brisk walk, or even when you run upstairs, your heart beats faster and the muscle has to work harder. By making your heart muscles work hard now and then, you keep it strong. A strong heart will keep on beating strongly and you won't get out of breath or conk out when you run for the bus or something. The lung gets stronger too as you work it when you run or do some exercise. Because your heart is working faster, you need to get the oxygen in quicker. And it all helps to make your body a much better, more efficient machine. There's nothing worse than not being able to do something or to enjoy yourself because you're too tired or out of breath all the time. And of course there's bone. Bone holds you up and keeps you together. Bone is changing all the time. It's a living thing. You exercise and you make sure that your bones keep strong until you are old and can keep up with your grandchildren. you decide when and how to exercise? Bob, why did you decide to exercise? It makes me feel so good, so much better. Once you start to feel that good, you want to feel like it all the time. But how can you feel good all the time? Isn't exercise hard work? Mm. At the beginning, maybe, yes, it's hard to start, especially when you get older. But I started when I was young, so it wasn't too bad. You can exercise anywhere. Exercise doesn't have to cost money. Why do you decide to keep fit? I want to keep fit so I can play more sports. I do various things to keep fit, like horse riding, dancing and running. I keep fit because I want to play football for Manchester United. I want to keep fit because I want to have big muscles. I think it's important to keep fit to keep your body in good shape. So I want to be able to keep fit for when I'm older, so I'm not a couch potato. I like going fishing with my dad because it's nice to get out in the fresh air. I like playing tennis because I can beat my brother. I keep fit because I want to keep my place in the Welsh rugby team and because research has shown that you live longer and enjoy a better quality of life. See these wonderful clean lungs? I've just popped back in here to show you what they're like. Bob has never smoked a cigarette. 
cigarettes can kill you. One reason is because the smoke makes the inside of the lungs so black and horrible, the lungs might not work properly anymore. So who'd be stupid enough to smoke poison straight in here? Oh, some of my friends are. I don't have to think very hard to decide not to smoke, but sometimes it can be very hard to say no in front of friends. What makes you decide not to smoke? When you smoke, tar builds up in your lungs and you're not able to breathe properly. When you smoke, um, it increases your pulse rate and you can get heart disease and lots of people die from heart disease. If you smoke when you're young, you'll never be as fit as you could be when you're older. Two million people die every year in the world because they smoke. When you're in a room full of smoke, you can breathe it in and it will leave tar in your lungs from other people's cigarette smoke. Smoking leaves a bad smell on your breath and on your clothes. If you start to smoke, you won't be as fit as you used to be. Ah, back in the brain again. One of the hardest things to do is to say no to friends. Your brain tells you that something is bad for you and that it's a stupid thing to do. But how would you stop yourself giving in? There's a girl in my class that smokes and often she tells us that she smokes. And she, she's 10 this year. My friends, since they've gone into high school, they've started smoking. And um, <clears throat> every time I've been going like to play with them, they've always like, pulled a packet of cigarettes out and offered me them. Um, but, I, but I said no, because um, my grandpa died because he started smoking. When I go to the high school, if they keep on off me and they go a big circle, I'll just say, it's hard to say no, because they, they keep on coming closer and they, and they force you to have one. Most people smoke because when they're around their friends, their friends encourage them to smoke. That's why I think people start to smoke. If you smoke, it could damage your baby if you're pregnant. And um, the smell, it smells as if you've been really in a bonfire and a sass pit. I know I'll never smoke because my mum went into intensive care with smoking and my granddad died with smoking a couple of weeks ago. So my mum gave up now smoking and my dad smokes less than he used to. Well, if people were really pushing me to um, try the cigarette, I might take it because to stop them, to stop them bullying me, and um, I might not take it because of my health. Do you want a fag? No. I've got an appetite for mine. No way. Stop, stop, my brain can't take any more. Oh, there are so many decisions to make, and so many people want to help you make the wrong decision. Have you ever been bullied at school? Are you a bully? Why? And what for? Well, sometimes I don't want to come to school because I'm being bullied. And because they get gangs, and they can still get me after school. So I just says I got a belly or something makes up excuses. Well, sometimes they were calling me um, names because of my surname, and um, they were really just hitting me and kicking me. There was this girl with a sister. I was walking home with my brother on my own, and they started picking on me. And then when I went home the next day, they were doing it again, and they were swearing. And it was horrible and they were bullying me and hitting me. So when I went home, I told my mother and she said, let's see what happens the next day. And when the next day came, they still done it and they were still bullying me. So I told my mother and my mother came down to school and she sorted it out with my head teacher. Because I've I been bullied and I've told my mum sometimes, but... She's gone at school and they told the teacher, but they still carry on. And when I do that, I just keep on telling the teacher till they stop. Just tell the teacher or the dinner lady. It was really hurting me inside because I, re I, really, um, I really hated them. 
And then when I went home, I told my mum that they were picking on me and she came down and they stopped. Bullies come in all shapes and sizes. Bullies are weak people. They may think they are tough and strong and are making an impression, but it's no good. People that are worth knowing are people who care. These people are making good, strong decisions. These children are grown up. They are taking responsibility. They're making decisions about the way they live and are helping other people to make the most of their lives too. Can you think of ways to help others? decisions go on in here, inside the brain. Why not think of how you could make your brain work better for you? Being healthy isn't just about eating and exercise and not smoking. It's about being happy about yourself, taking care of yourself and other people around you. Don't forget, there's no one else in the whole wide world like you. You are special and you only get one life, so make the most of it. So don't forget, think before you do anything. Make sure you do the right thing. How are you doing then, Bob? Look, I'm trying. Bob, you've been at it for ages now. What about perfume? She'd like perfume, wouldn't she? Uh, too expensive. Oh, just send her a card then. She's my wife. I've got to do something special. Wife? Did he say wife? I didn't know you were married. So, what difference does it make? You don't know everything, you know. Well, who is she then? Anyone I know? That's her. In that photograph over there. But that's Blood. Blood is your wife? You are Blood's husband? But Blood's pregnant. You're going to be a father. I know, I'm going to be a daddy. Oh, this is all too much for my brain. Phew! See you next time. Bye. It's been a pleasant journey, right from the start. To wander through your various bits and get to every part. Your mouth's so clean, I made it my camp. It gets a little rough, it's often rather damp. Your kidneys were amazing, your stomach's a treat. Your bladder wasn't funny, but your liver was neat. Exercise makes your muscles so strong. Your bones are hard, I could find nothing wrong. I went to see your lungs, they're nice and pink. I visited your brain, I watched you think. Bob, it's been nice to visit you and see that all is hunky-dory and you're healthy. Tomorrow morning at 10.45, Teaching Today looks at primary science and suggests some ways in which children can encounter the natural world. Back to today on BBC Two, and in a couple of minutes, Landmarks looks at the turbulent years of the 1970s. Yeah.